Alright, so today, I'm going to explain what the sum of all positive whole numbers is. Now, this process is entirely based on summation, which I've made a video about in the past. Now, while I don't feel it's entirely necessary to watch that video to understand this one, I feel that watching that video may give you a better understanding. So I'm providing you with that option. But, nevertheless, Let's calculate the sum of all positive integers. Alright, so the interesting sum that we're going to be looking at is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way on up to infinity. Now, we can write this in a much more compact form as the sum of the num digits n from 1 to infinity. Now, if you were to guess the answer to this sum, you would logically conclude that it is infinity. Which, you know, makes logical sense. However, it is not. In fact, the answer to this is negative 1 twelfth. Yes, by summing all of the positive integers, we get a negative fraction. Now, calculating the answer to this sum actually involves using two other sums. The first of these, which we will call S1, is equal to 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, and so on, off to infinity. Now, we generally have two conclusions for this. Either we have 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, and we have stop at a minus 1, and so we have an equal number of positive ones and negative ones. As such, this will sum to zero. Now, the alternative option is that we go 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and stop at a positive 1. In this case, we have one more positive 1 than negative 1, in which case it will sum to 1. Now, both of these cases involve us stopping it at some point, which means that it is no longer an infinite sum. Now, to figure out the infinite sum, we essentially take our two possible options, and we just average them. So 1 plus 0 divided by 2, that's just 1 half. So, the answer to 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on is 1 half. Now, there are other proofs for this, but I feel this is the easiest to understand. Now that we know that our first sum is equal to 1 half, we can move on to our second sum, S2. Now this is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5, and so on, alternating positive and negative, and continuing on up to infinity. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to add our second sum to our second sum. Now, whenever you add something to itself, this is the same as multiplying that thing by 2. So that's what we're going to do. Now, when we add our second sum to our second sum, we are going to stagger the second second sum. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Now, this staggering doesn't mean anything mathematically, it just allows you to more easily see what's going on. So what we're going to do is we now have 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5, and then so on, continuing on up to infinity. Now, when we sum these, we get, let me just simply add them up, we have 1, and then negative 2 plus 1, that is negative 1, and then 3 minus 2, that's just positive 1, and negative 4 minus 3, we got negative 1, and 5 minus 4, that's positive 1, and so on, and you'll notice that this is actually equal to our first sum. So this means that 2 times our second sum is equal to our first sum. And, as we showed earlier, our first sum was equal to 1 half. So, if we just divide both sides by 2, we show that our second sum is equal to 1 fourth. Now that we know that our second sum is equal to 1 fourth, we can finally figure out this madness that is our main sum equaling negative 1 twelfth. So, 
I wrote our main sum initially as the sum of the integers n from 1 to infinity. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as s, just because it's a lot simpler and makes things easier. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our main sum and subtract it from our second sum. So, just writing this out so you can see what's going on, we have our main sum, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, and so on. And then we had our second sum, which we are subtracting, so we have a minus, and then the second sum will go in parentheses. So our second sum was 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6, and so on, off to infinity. Now, distributing this negative, we have a negative 1 and a positive 2, a negative 3 and a positive 4, a negative 5 and a positive 6, and so on. Now, at this point, we can simply add these two numbers together. So we're going to do that. Now, 1 plus negative 1, that's simply 0. I'm not even going to bother writing it. 2 plus 2, that is 4. 3 minus 3, again, 0, not going to write it. 4 plus 4, we have 8. 5 minus 5, 0. And 6 plus 6, we have 12. And so on. And we are, of course, adding all of these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a 4 out of all of these numbers. So that will leave us with 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on. Now, you may notice that this looks a little familiar. In fact, this is our main sum. So this means that it is equal to 4 times our main sum. So this means that s, our main sum actually, minus our second sum is equal to 4 times our main sum. Now, since we know that our second sum is equal to uh, 1 fourth, we can solve this pretty easily. So, just going over here, we have our main sum minus 1 fourth, that was our second sum, and that equals 4 times our main sum. Subtracting so s to both sides, we have negative 1 fourth equals 3s, dividing both sides by 3, we find that s equals negative 1 twelfth. So it may seem weird, but mathematically it works. And this is actually supported by physics. Take, for example, string theory. The fact that the sum of all integers, uh, all positive integers, that is, is negative one twelfth, is the evidence for 26 dimensions. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya.